So what is up everybody? Thank you so much for tuning back in. So let's have a look today at the Auto Edixon 100mm f2.8 lens. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned. So what is up everybody, thank you for tuning back in. Today I have a quite an interesting product for you. I have the a really cheap 100mm lens on loan which was uh, sent to me by a friend to do some repair work. So I thought, hey why not, let's have a look at this lens and have a look at how it performs. So let's talk about this lens. It is called the Auto Edixon and if you google it you won't find a lot of things about it because it is a lens that was manufactured by a dozen different companies under different names. Uh, it was done by Porst and by Vivitar and it was called a lot of different things. This is just one equivalent. It's the 100mm f2.8 and it is really rather cheap. So you can buy it under a lot of different names. It will cost you around 40 to 80 euros, depending which company you find it on. And they seem to be not that often. So yes, you may have to search around for them a bit if you're interested in it. So it's not often that you can find a portrait lens for that kind of money and that's why I'm really interested in this. So I will show you today how it handles light, how it renders bokeh, how it renders out your subject. So this 100mm f2.8 has 8 aperture blades making it a hexagon style um, aperture which will show up in your bokeh but it's it's not 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 bad for that kind of lens. The haptic feedback is quite positive. The focusing ring had a bit of a problem. I fixed that with new lubrication and now it runs really perfectly. Before it was quite stiff on one end and quite loose on the other. Now it's turning freely all the way around. So this lens focuses from 1.2 meters to infinity and it does this by while turning something like 180 degrees which is okay but not great if you're shooting portraiture and you have to be focusing quick for my opinion it's a bit too much so it could be shorter but yeah it's okay the build quality is quite nice as well it's completely made out of metal and it leaves quite a nice haptic feedback for a 100 millimeter i find it quite short it is something like nine centimeters high which is really not that much if you compare it to 135 millimeter lenses and 50 it's a bit a bit bigger than a 50 but not that much bigger than a 50 so it's great in the hands it feels nice it focuses great so the build quality is really on the strong side it's not that cheaply built as i would have imagined from those guys from the production time uh, I think it was made in the early 70s to 90s. So at the serial number it says 7100012. So maybe they are constructed like the Russians do and 71 will be the uh, production year. But I'm not positive about that. So now let's sum this part up. We have a nicely built lens in great shape. It is really small. It has a long fo focusing throw and a nice clicking aperture. So the haptic feedback is really quite nice. So in the next step we will have a look at the optical qualities of this lens. 
So now we are looking at a few pictures. Um, I have done them all in JPEG and there is a reason for that because if you, if you have a look at raw files, every raw converter in camera puts them differently. JPEGs, they all do kind of similar. So we are now looking at the JPEG files, which should be easier to compare. So now we are looking at the first test picture and I was focusing around this area. If I focus in 100% we can see this is at uh, f2.8. We have good sharpness, it's really not that bad. Um, the micro contrast is not that good, but it's okay. We can live with that. Um, let's have a look at the bokeh around here. There is, it's not that smooth of a bouquet, so it's, uh, it has a lot of structures in it. Um, and if you see the highlights, they blow out in circles right around here. So let's have a look at the next shot. This was done with taking the aperture to f4 and now have a, uh, let's have a look in the center. Ah, there is no real sharpness, if you can see that right here. It's a little bit of bloomy and gloomy. It's not really sharp. The structures are not that good. And this is at a four. Let's go in one more. Now we are at a 5.6. And now let's have a look right here. Um, this, by the way, this is uh, done uh, with an A7 II, uh, so 24 megapixels, not really a demanding sensor. So we have sharpness right around here, but it's from the detail structure, not really nice. I have lenses that render a lot of structure better. And if you have a look at the bokeh, it gets um, rounder and more structured as you prop it in with the aperture. Let's get it on and now we are at 11 let's point it in yeah right around here we have really nice contrast contrast is not that bad in this situation but I'm missing a lot of the sharpness and details so it there is not a lot of micro contrast not happy about this let's have a look at another picture to confirm this this was done in the garden and we can see the bouquet uh, at f2.8 the bouquet is really not that unpleasant. I like it in this picture. It's not distracting. It it bubbles a bit, but that's okay. Let's go into this picture a bit. And we can see right around here, we have sh uh, sharpness. It's okay-ish. Um, you can see the fall off um, is quite harsh and we lose a lot of details right around here, from here to here, we lose a lot of details. And so it's quite usable at f2.8, but it could be better from the structure and details. Now I, ha I have uh, put it down to f4 and we can see the octagon-like shape right here from the aperture, which is something I really do not like. I'm not a fan, but that's the trade-off if you buy into, into lenses with uh, not that many aperture blades. Um, so now if you have a look at this um, leaf, there is a lot, of uh, a lot of detail more than at f2.8. So we see if we go, uh, if we put the aperture down a bit, we get a lot more structure and a lot more detail into the picture, but we get those bokeh effects. Let's have a, have a look at a little bit of side lighting. And if we go in here and have a look at this, all those small little details. This is out of 2.8 by the way. I'm really not that unhappy with the results. Um, those leaves could have a little bit more of uh, contrast, uh, micro contrast, I'm sorry, contrast is good. It handles the side light quite well. Uh, there is no apparent uh, form of chromatic aberration. They are really in, uh, okay. Let's have a look over here. There is chromatic aberration, we can see it. Oh, and I see this was not done at f2.8, it was done at f4. 
because we can see the octagon shape and there at this reflecting rail we have a bit of chromatic aberration but it's okay I'm not that unhappy let's have a look at this corner right here and we can see a bit of fall off um, to the center there is a uh, more sharpness but it's okay let's have a look at this picture I'm not sure what those fruits are called in English but they have something like a fur they are uh, as big as the uh, as apples and they get as big as apples and they have a fur around it and they're really hard really nice to eat um, if you have a look at around here the fur does live with details but there are no apparent details right here and that's a pity so at f2.8 it's not that kind of a great lens let's have a look at another lighting situation we have direct sunlight hitting from above right here and we have a lot of circular highlights around right around here and the background and we can see it gets bubbly bokeh gets bubbly and that's not really a look i'm interested in i'm really honest uh, i pref i do prefer smooth bokeh in the background so that the bokeh um, melts away and uh, if you have a look at pictures for with a portrait i don't want to have this kind of bokeh so in my opinion, this is a deal breaker for portraiture. As I've already told you, details not that great. Um, micro contrasts also, but if you stop it down, it gets better. Now let's have a look at some difficult lighting situations. So right around here, I have focused um, here right on this spot and I wanted to show you how contrast is handled in bright lighting situations. And if we zoom right in, you can see right around here is the focusing point. Uh, it's not great with the sharpness. And then we have fall off and it falls off into those glooming highlights. If you like them, it's okay. If you don't, it's not. Now, I have done another test which is quite interesting. And that is if you have sunlight. In your picture and I think those pictures speak for themselves if there's any form of sunlight near the lens it is horrendously flaring and the contrast goes away really fast so this could be a deal breaker if you're a portrait photographer because sun light will be a problem. This may vary if you put a, um, a sun shade over it, but I don't have it with this lens. So this is atrociously bad for flaring. Really, really horrendous. <laughs> I really have to say I, I haven't seen much worse than this and I have seen really bad. This is one of the worst. So now what are my thoughts about this lens? It's uh, quite a mixed bag in my opinion. Build quality is great. Pricing is really, really great. There is nothing to argue about a 40 to 60 to 80 euro lens in the 100 millimeter mark. That's really a bonus point for this lens. But there are a few problems with it. In picture quality, a lot of things come together. The first thing is I would use a 100 millimeter lens for portraiture. Now if you have a look at 1.2 meters at the, uh, is the closest focusing distance that is really far away. So this could be too much for um, some kind of pictures which you might want to take with a 100 millimeter lens. So that's a problem. Another problem is if you're doing those portraits at f2.8, you lose a lot of details, um, especially at the outer picture sides, so you lose a lot of quality. The micro contrasts are not that great, so I would use it stop down at f4. And now there comes the next problem. If I want to shoot portraits, I want to have the aperture as far open as I can for a blurred background. So there are two problems with that. First thing is the blurred, uh, the picture quality at f2.8, micro contrasts not that great, structures not that great, problematic. What is a bit better, uh, 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 the next problem is if you have a look at the bokeh balls, they are quite structured and if I stop down I get a hexagon shape and you have to really like 
that in your pictures and I really don't. And the bokeh balls are quite structured and they are not floating away and they are not milky smooth. It's a really special lens and I don't like that kind of things in my pictures. So I wouldn't use it for portraits and therefore I would not buy this lens. Maybe if you are photographing at a, uh, an, uh, other subjects, maybe this, greatest, uh, this lens is great for you, but I would not recommend it to you uh, if you want to start with portrait photography and stuff like that. You really won't be happy long time with this lens. So it's kind of a mixed bag. The haptics are great, the optics are not that great. And if you have a look at the flares, sun will be a really big problem in pictures. So I hope you find this interesting. So thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Goodbye!